In today's message, we're going to discuss something that I believe is crucial for personal growth and success. Working harder on yourself. Many of us are constantly putting in effort at our jobs, in our relationships, and in our daily tasks. But we often neglect the most important work of all. Working on ourselves. But don't worry, you're not alone in this struggle. I've been there too, and I know how easy it is to get caught up in the daily grind and forget about our own personal development. But here's the good news. By listening to this message, you can turn things around. You can start investing in yourself and see incredible results in all areas of your life. So let's dive into the five ways that will help you work harder on yourself and become the best version of yourself. Starting with number five. The fifth way to work harder on yourself is by taking care of your physical and mental health. We live in a fast-paced world where we are constantly bombarded with responsibilities, deadlines and expectations. It's easy to get caught up in the hustle and forget to take care of ourselves. But I'm here to remind you that your health should always be a top priority. Without good health, everything else in life becomes meaningless. First and foremost, let's talk about physical health. Our bodies are like machines, and just like any machine, they need proper maintenance to function at their best. This means getting enough sleep, eating nutritious food, and staying active. It's not about being perfect or having a six-pack. It's about feeling good and having the energy to tackle whatever challenges come your way. I know some of you may be thinking, but I don't have time to exercise or cook healthy meals. Well, let me tell you this. You don't have time not to. Investing in your physical health now will save you time, money, and energy in the long run. As the saying goes, an ounce of prevention is worth a pound of cure. Don't wait until your body breaks down to start taking care of it. And let me tell you, the benefits of a healthy body go far beyond just physical appearance. When you take care of your body, you will have more energy, better focus, and a stronger immune system. This means you will be able to work harder and achieve more in all areas of your life. As I always say, take care of your body, it's the only place you have to live. Now let's move on to mental health. This is a topic that is often overlooked, but it is just as important as physical health. Our minds are powerful tools, and just like our bodies, they need proper care and maintenance. We live in a society that glorifies busyness and constantly being on the go, but I want to remind you that it's okay to slow down and take a break. Mental health includes taking care of your emotional well-being, managing stress, and finding ways to relax and recharge. This can look different for everyone but some common practices include meditation, journaling, spending time in nature, or simply taking a break from technology. Whatever it may be, make sure you are taking the time to check in with yourself and prioritize your mental health. I know many of you may be thinking, but I can't afford to take a break. I have too much to do. But let me ask you this. What good are you to anyone if you are burnt out, stressed, and overwhelmed? Taking care of your mental health is not a luxury. It is a necessity, and when you prioritize your mental health, you will be able to work harder and more effectively in all areas of your life. In addition, taking care of your mental health also means surrounding yourself with positive and supportive people. We all know that we are influenced by the people we spend the most time with, so make sure you are surrounding yourself with people who uplift and inspire you. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. Choose wisely. Now I want to address a common misconception about working harder on yourself. Many people think that it means pushing yourself to the limit, sacrificing your health and well-being for success. But let me tell you, that is not the case. Working harder on yourself means finding a balance between pushing yourself to grow and taking care of yourself along the way. I often hear people say, I'll take care of my health once I achieve my goals. But let me tell you this, there will always be another goal to achieve. If you keep putting off your health, you may never get to enjoy the fruits of your labor. Don't wait for the perfect time to start taking care of yourself. The perfect time is now. Now on to number four. The fourth way to work harder on yourself is practicing self-discipline. How many of you have set goals for yourselves only to give up on them soon after? How many of you have started a new habit only to break it a few days later? I'm sure many of you can relate to this. And the reason behind this is simple. Lack of self-discipline. Self-discipline is the ability to control one's impulses, emotions, and actions in order to achieve a desired goal. It is the key to success in any aspect of life, be it personal or professional. It is what separates the winners from the losers, 
the successful from the mediocre. You see, success doesn't come easy. It requires hard work, dedication, and most importantly, self-discipline. It's not about having the perfect plan or the right resources. It's about having the willpower to stick to your plan and make the most out of the resources you have. So how do we practice self-discipline? Let me share with you some tips that have helped me in my own journey of personal development. Firstly, set clear and specific goals. Without a clear destination in mind, it's easy to lose track and give in to distractions. Your goals should be specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound. Write them down and keep them in a place where you can see them every day. This will serve as a constant reminder and keep you motivated to stay on track. Secondly, create a routine and stick to it. Our habits shape our lives, and it's important to have a routine that supports our goals. This could include waking up early, exercising, reading, or any other activity that aligns with your goals. It's not easy to break old habits and form new ones, but with consistent effort and discipline, it can be done. Next, learn to say no. We live in a world where we are constantly bombarded with distractions and temptations. It's easy to get sidetracked and lose focus on our goals. But it's important to learn to say no to things that do not align with our goals. This could mean saying no to social events, unhealthy food, or even negative people. Remember, every time you say yes to something, you are saying no to something else. Another important aspect of self-discipline is managing our time effectively. Time is a precious resource, and it's important to use it wisely. Plan your day in advance and prioritize your tasks. This will help you stay focused and avoid wasting time on unimportant things. Moreover, it's important to hold yourself accountable. It's easy to make excuses and blame external factors for our lack of progress, but the truth is, we are responsible for our own actions and results. Take ownership of your mistakes and learn from them. And when you do achieve your goals, celebrate your success and use it as motivation to keep going. Lastly, surround yourself with like-minded individuals. We are greatly influenced by the people we spend our time with. If you want to be successful, surround yourself with people who have similar goals and values. They will not only support and motivate you, but also hold you accountable for your actions. I know that practicing self-discipline is not easy. It requires commitment, consistency, and a strong will. But I can assure you, the rewards are worth it. When you have self-discipline, you have the power to shape your life and achieve your dreams. Now on to number three. The third way to work harder on yourself is by investing in self-education. As I have said before, Success is not something that happens to you. It is something that you create. And one of the key elements in creating success is investing in yourself. Now you may be wondering, what exactly is self-education? Well, it is the process of actively seeking out knowledge and skills that will help you grow and improve as a person. It is about taking the initiative to learn and develop yourself rather than waiting for someone else to do it for you. And let me tell you, there is no better investment you can make than in investing in yourself. You see, the world we live in is constantly changing and evolving, and if we want to keep up and stay ahead, we must be willing to learn and adapt. As the great philosopher Socrates once said, the only true wisdom is in knowing that you know nothing. This means that no matter how much we think we know, there is always more to learn. And the more we learn, the more we realize how much we don't know. So how do we go about investing in self-education? Well, the first step is to have a hunger for knowledge. You must have a desire to learn and grow. As I always say, formal education will make you a living. Self-education will make you a fortune. Don't just rely on the education you received in school. Continue to educate yourself through books, seminars, workshops, and any other resources available to you. The second step is to be selective in what you learn. There is a wealth of information out there but not all of it is valuable or relevant to your goals and aspirations. You must be discerning and choose to learn things that will help you in your personal and professional life. As the saying goes, don't just read the easy stuff. You may be entertained by it, but you will never grow from it. The third step is to take action on what you learn. Knowledge is only power when it is applied. It is not enough to just consume information. You must put it into practice. As I always say, ideas can be life-changing. Sometimes all you need to open the door is just one more good idea. So don't be afraid to try new things and put your knowledge into action. Now you may be thinking, 
but I don't have the time or money to invest in self-education, and to that I say, you can't afford not to. The truth is, we make time and money for the things that are important to us, and if you truly want to achieve success, then investing in yourself should be a top priority. Think about it. Successful people are constantly learning and growing. They understand that their success is directly tied to their personal development, and they are willing to invest the time and money to improve themselves. As the great entrepreneur Warren Buffett once said, the best investment you can make is in yourself. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I'm already successful. I don't need to invest in self-education. And to that I say, success is not a destination, it is a journey. And if you stop learning and growing, you will eventually fall behind. As the saying goes, the only thing worse than being blind is having sight but no vision. Investing in self-education not only helps us achieve success, but also helps us maintain it. It keeps our minds sharp and our skills relevant. It allows us to adapt to changes and challenges in our personal and professional lives. And most importantly, it helps us become the best version of ourselves. And now, number two. The second way to work harder on yourself is developing a growth mindset. Now you may be wondering, what exactly is a growth mindset? Well, let me explain. A growth mindset is the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed and improved through hard work, dedication, and perseverance. It is the understanding that we are not limited by our current skills or talents, but rather, we have the potential to continuously grow and improve. So why is having a growth mindset so important? Because it is the key to unlocking your full potential and achieving your dreams. You see, many people have a fixed mindset, which is the belief that our abilities and intelligence are set in stone. They believe that they are either good at something or they're not, and there's nothing they can do to change it. This kind of thinking is limiting and can hold us back from reaching our true potential. But those with a growth mindset understand that success is not based on innate talent, but rather on effort and hard work. They see challenges as opportunities for growth, and they embrace failure as a necessary part of the learning process. They are not afraid to step out of their comfort zone and try new things because they know that with dedication and perseverance, they can improve and achieve their goals. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, I'm not a naturally talented person. I don't have what it takes to succeed. Well, let me tell you something. Talent is overrated. It's not about how naturally talented you are. It's about how hard you're willing to work. As the saying goes, hard work beats talent when talent doesn't work hard. Think about some of the most successful people in the world. Do you think they got to where they are solely because of their talent? No. They got there because they had a growth mindset. They were willing to put in the time, effort, and hard work to continuously improve and achieve their goals. Take Michael Jordan, for example. He is widely regarded as one of the greatest basketball players of all time. But did you know that he was cut from his high school basketball team? That's right. The man who went on to win six NBA championships and numerous MVP awards was not initially seen as talented enough to make his high school team. But instead of giving up, he used that rejection as motivation to work even harder. He developed a growth mindset and became one of the most successful and iconic athletes in history. Now I'm not saying that developing a growth mindset is easy. It takes time, effort, and a willingness to push past your comfort zone. But I can guarantee you that the rewards are worth it. When you have a growth mindset, you are constantly challenging yourself, learning new things, and achieving things you never thought possible. So how can you develop a growth mindset? The first step is to start believing in yourself. Believe that you have the potential to grow and improve. Believe that you are not limited by your current abilities or circumstances. Believe that you can achieve anything you set your mind to. Next, embrace challenges and failures. Don't be afraid to try new things and step out of your comfort zone. And when you do fail, don't see it as a setback, but rather as an opportunity to learn and grow. Remember, failure is not the opposite of success. It is a necessary part of the journey to success. Surround yourself with people who have a growth mindset. As the saying goes, you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. So make sure you are surrounding yourself with people who will challenge and inspire you to grow and improve. And finally, never stop learning. Read books, attend seminars, listen to podcasts, whatever it takes to continuously expand your knowledge and skills. The more you learn, the more you grow. And now, on to number one. Setting clear and specific goals. 
I have spent my life studying success and personal development, and I have come to the conclusion that setting clear and specific goals is the number one way to achieving greatness. Let me ask you, what do you want out of life? What are your dreams, your aspirations, your goals? Do you want to be financially free, have a successful career, or have a happy and fulfilling personal life? Whatever it is that you desire, I can assure you that setting clear and specific goals is the first step towards achieving them. Goals are like a road map. They give us direction and purpose. Without them, we are wandering aimlessly, hoping to stumble upon success. But with clear and specific goals, we have a destination in mind. And we can take the necessary steps to get there. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I have goals. I want to be successful. And that's great. But let me ask you this. Are your goals clear and specific? Are they written down? And do you have a plan to achieve them? Vague goals like, I want to be successful, or I want to be rich, will not get you very far. They lack direction and specificity. On the other hand, clear and specific goals are measurable, achievable, and have a deadline. This makes it easier to track your progress and adjust your actions accordingly. But setting clear and specific goals is not enough. You must also have a plan to achieve them. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. You must break down your goals into smaller, actionable steps. What do you need to do to achieve your goal? What skills do you need to develop? What resources do you need? By creating a plan, you are setting yourself up for success. Now, I want to share with you a technique that has helped me and countless others achieve our goals. It's called the SMART Goal Setting Method. SMART stands for Specific, Measurable, Achievable, Relevant, and Time-Bound. Let's break it down. Specific. Your goals should be clear and well-defined. Measurable. You should be able to track your progress and know when you have achieved your goal. Achievable. Your goal should be realistic and within your reach. Relevant. Your goals should align with your values and aspirations. Time-bound. Your goals should have a deadline. By using the SMART method, you are setting yourself up for success. You are giving yourself a clear roadmap to follow. And you are holding yourself accountable by setting a deadline. But setting clear and specific goals is not enough. You must also have the right mindset to achieve them. You must believe in yourself and your ability to achieve your goals. You must have a burning desire to succeed and be willing to put in the hard work and dedication required. As I always say, if you want to have more, you have to become more. This means that in order to achieve your goals, you must work on yourself. You must develop the necessary skills, habits, and mindset to reach your full potential. And this brings me to the next part of my speech. Personal development. Personal development is the key to unlocking your full potential and achieving your goals. It is about constantly learning, growing, and improving yourself. You see, success is not a destination. It is a journey. And personal development is the vehicle that will take you there. It is the process of becoming the best version of yourself, both personally and professionally. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, I don't have time for personal development. I have a job, a family, and other responsibilities. And to that, I say, personal development is not a luxury. It is a necessity. It is an investment in yourself that will pay off in the long run. I challenge you to make personal development a priority in your life. Set aside time each day to read, listen to audiobooks or podcasts, attend seminars, or take courses. The more you invest in yourself, the more you will grow and the closer you will get to achieving your goals. In closing, setting clear and specific goals is the number one way to work harder on yourself. It is the first step towards achieving success and personal development. Remember to use the SMART method when setting your goals and always have a plan to achieve them. And never forget, success is not a destination, it is a journey. Embrace personal development and make it a priority in your life. As I always say, work harder on yourself than you do on your job. Thank you. Hello everyone, I would like to discuss the 10 major reasons why procrastination is undermining your goals. You can't afford to miss this, so stick around until the end, or you'll never understand why certain recurring issues persist in your life. Today, we're delving deep into the subject of procrastination and how it can be the primary obstacle hindering the realization of your dreams and objectives. If you're someone who frequently finds themselves delaying important tasks or deferring your goals, then this message is intended for you. You're not alone in this struggle. 
Procrastination is a prevalent habit affecting millions, and it can significantly impact our lives. However, the good news is that by heeding this message, you can reverse the trend and seize control of your life. In today's discourse, we'll explore the top 10 reasons why procrastination is sabotaging your goals. We'll uncover its root causes and offer practical strategies to overcome it. By the end of this discussion, you'll gain a deeper insight into how procrastination holds you back and what steps you can take to break free from its clutches. So, if you're ready to stop making excuses and start making progress towards your goals, let's dive in. Remember, you possess the power to alter your habits and craft the life you aspire to. So, let's commence with the 10th reason, shall we? Disappointment and regret are among the primary factors contributing to how procrastination sabotages your goals. We all harbor aspirations and dreams we wish to fulfill, whether it's establishing a thriving business, traversing the globe, nurturing fulfilling relationships, or simply leading a life brimming with abundance and joy. But how many of us truly take decisive steps towards realizing those aspirations? How many of us are culpable of procrastination? I've personally grappled with it in the past, and I'm certain many of you can relate. Procrastination involves deferring or postponing tasks that need attention. It's akin to shelving a task until the 11th hour or, worse yet, neglecting it entirely. Often we justify our procrastination with excuses like, I'll do it tomorrow, or, I'm not in the right frame of mind at the moment. However, procrastination is a dream killer. It impedes progress and success. So, why do we procrastinate? There could be myriad reasons, but fear is a prominent one. Fear of failure, fear of success, fear of inadequacy, fear of judgment. The list goes on. This fear begets regret and disappointment. Regret and disappointment aren't merely transient emotions. They wield a profound influence on our lives. They can shackle us, impeding our potential and thwarting the realization of our dreams. They undermine our self-assurance and self-worth, instilling doubts about our capabilities. Ultimately, they steer us towards a path of mediocrity and unrealized dreams. I refuse to accept that fate for you, and I'm certain you harbor the same sentiments for yourself. So, how do we extricate ourselves from the clutches of regret and disappointment? The solution is simple, though not effortless. Take action. Act decisively towards your goals, even if it unnerves you. Cease fabricating excuses and assume responsibility for your life. I acknowledge that initiating change is daunting. But here's a secret. The hardest part is taking the initial step. Once you embark on that journey, momentum ensues, propelling you forward. Another potent tool in overcoming regret and disappointment is altering our perspective. Rather than viewing failure as an adversary, Regard it as a stepping stone for growth. Failure isn't antithetical to success. It's an integral component thereof. Every luminary has stumbled along their journey, but they've harnessed failure as a catalyst for advancement. Moreover, cherish the journey. Growth transpires amidst the process, not merely at its culmination. Now let's address a common impediment hindering progress towards your goals, the fear of success. You might find it incredulous that anyone could dread success. Nonetheless, success bears its own set of challenges and responsibilities, which might overwhelm us at times. Yet, you're prepared. You possess the resilience and aptitude to navigate the challenges success bestows upon you. The only way to ascertain your readiness is to take action, to venture forth and witness where it leads. Before we proceed to the ninth reason, envision yourself a decade hence, reflecting on your life. Will you harbor regrets? Will disappointment gnaw at you for squandering opportunities? Or will you exude pride for vanquishing your fears and embracing action? The choice is yours. You wield the agency to sculpt the life you covet, commencing with action today. Now, on to the ninth reason, a pivotal one at that. Lack of self-discipline. We're all endowed with the capacity for greatness, yet many falter in realizing their full potential. Why? Due to a dearth of self-discipline. It's a perplexing paradox. Individuals harbor lofty ambitions yet falter in mustering the discipline requisite for their attainment. Self-discipline entails regulating thoughts and actions to manifest a predetermined objective, a linchpin of success across domains. Lacking it renders us akin to ships adrift sans a helmsman, meandering aimlessly through life's vast expanse. We dwell in an era of instant gratification, where impatience and deferred gratification have become antiquated virtues. 
Seduced by the allure of immediate results, we've relinquished the value of toil and patience. Consequently, we succumb to procrastination, the nemesis of progress. By procrastinating, we defer actions imperative for realizing our financial goals, inadvertently stymieing our growth. This procrastinatory cycle begets stress and anxiety, ensnaring us in a web of worry and guilt, impeding our mental and emotional well-being. Moreover, procrastination engenders a culture of complacency, deterring us from embracing challenges requisite for growth. The first step is to recognize that procrastination is a habit, and like any habit, it can be changed. We must take responsibility for our actions and understand that we have the power to choose whether we will procrastinate or take action towards our goals. Next, we must set clear and specific goals for ourselves. As the saying goes, a goal without a plan is just a wish. When we have a clear vision of what we want to achieve, we are more likely to take action and avoid procrastination. But it's not enough to just have goals. We must also break them down into smaller manageable tasks and set deadlines for each one. Finally, we must develop the discipline and consistency to follow through on our tasks and commitments. This is where personal development comes into play. We must continuously work on ourselves, our mindset, and our habits to become the best version of ourselves. This includes learning time management skills, setting priorities, and developing a positive mindset that will help us overcome the urge to procrastinate. My friends, the financial consequences of procrastination are real and they can have a significant impact on our lives. But the good news is, we have the power to change our habits and take control of our finances. It all starts with the decision to take action and commit to our goals. Remember, time is our most precious resource, and we must use it wisely if we want to achieve success and financial freedom. Moving on to number seven, we all know that procrastination is the enemy of progress. It is the thief of time and the killer of dreams. And one of the most devastating consequences of procrastination is its impact on our relationships. You see, when we procrastinate, we not only delay our own success, but we also let down the people who are counting on us, our family, friends, and colleagues. Think about it. How many times have you promised to spend quality time with your loved ones, only to push it off because you had more important things to do? How many times have you missed important events or milestones in your loved ones' lives because you were too busy procrastinating? Procrastination creates a rift in our relationships. It creates distance and resentment. It sends a message to our loved ones that they are not a priority in our lives, and this can have a long-lasting impact on our relationships. Not only does procrastination affect our current relationships, but it also hinders our ability to form new ones. When we procrastinate, we miss out on opportunities to connect with others. We miss out on networking events, social gatherings, and even simple interactions with strangers. And as a result, we miss out on potential friendships and partnerships that could have a positive impact on our lives. But why do we procrastinate? What is it about this habit that is so alluring yet so destructive? The truth is, procrastination is a coping mechanism. It is a way for us to avoid discomfort and fear. We procrastinate because we are afraid of failure, of rejection, of not being good enough. But what we fail to realize is that by procrastinating, we are actually creating the very thing we fear. Failure. We are setting ourselves up for disappointment and regret. We are sabotaging our own success and damaging our relationships in the process. So what can we do to break this cycle of procrastination and improve our relationships? The first step is to acknowledge that we have a problem. We must recognize that procrastination is holding us back from reaching our full potential and damaging our relationships. Once we have this awareness, we can start taking action to overcome it. The next step is to set clear and specific goals. When we have a clear vision of what we want to achieve, it becomes easier to take action towards it. Write down your goals, break them down into smaller manageable tasks, and set deadlines for each task. This will give you a roadmap to follow and help you stay on track. Another important aspect of overcoming procrastination is to identify and eliminate distractions. We live in a world filled with distractions, social media, television, video games, and it's easy to get caught up in these time wasters. It's important to be mindful of how we spend our time and to eliminate anything that is not contributing to our goals. But perhaps the most powerful tool in overcoming procrastination is accountability. Find an accountability partner, someone who will hold you accountable and keep you on track. This could be a friend, a family member, or a coach. 
Having someone to answer to can be a powerful motivator to overcome procrastination and take action towards our goals. Moving on to number six, and it's a deep one. There's this thing called stagnation and lack of progress. You see, we live in a world where we are constantly bombarded with messages of success and achievement. We are told that we can be anything we want to be, do anything we want to do, and have anything we want to have. And while this is true, the reality is that many of us are not living up to our full potential. We are stuck in a cycle of procrastination, where we put off taking action towards our goals and dreams. But why is this happening? Why are so many of us stuck in this cycle of stagnation and lack of progress? The answer, my friends, is simple. It is because we are afraid. We are afraid of failure, of rejection, of not being good enough. And so we choose to stay in our comfort zones, where we feel safe and secure. But let me tell you, my friends, staying in your comfort zone is the most dangerous thing you can do for your personal growth and success. You see, when we stay in our comfort zones, we are not growing. We are not challenging ourselves or pushing ourselves to be better. And as a result, we become stagnant. We stop learning, we stop growing, and we stop progressing towards our goals. And this, my friends, is a recipe for disaster. Because when we stop growing, we start dying. We start living a life of mediocrity, where we settle for less than we are capable of. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. You may be thinking, But Jim, I have tried to take action towards my goals, but I keep failing, so I have given up. Well, let me tell you something, my friends. Failure is not the opposite of success. It is a part of success. Every successful person has failed at some point in their journey. But what sets them apart is that they did not let failure stop them. They kept going, they kept pushing, and they kept growing. You see, my friends, success is not a destination. It is a journey. It is a journey of constant growth and progress. And the only way to keep moving forward on this journey is to take action. As the saying goes, a journey of a thousand miles begins with a single step. So if you want to achieve your goals and live your best life, you must take that first step, and then another, and another, until you reach your destination. But taking action is not always easy. We are faced with distractions, doubts, and fears. And this is where procrastination comes in. Procrastination is the enemy of progress. It is the thief of time and the killer of dreams. It is the act of putting off important tasks and activities in favor of less important ones. And while it may give us temporary relief, in the long run, it only leads to regret and disappointment. So how do we overcome procrastination and take action towards our goals? The answer, my friends, lies in personal development. Personal development is the process of improving oneself through self-awareness, self-discovery, and self-improvement. It is about becoming the best version of ourselves and unlocking our full potential. You see, when we invest in our personal development, we become more confident, more motivated, and more focused. We learn how to set goals, create a plan of action, and stay accountable. We learn how to manage our time, our emotions, and our thoughts. And most importantly, we learn how to overcome procrastination and take consistent action towards our goals. But personal development is not a one-time event. It is a lifelong journey. It requires commitment, dedication, and discipline. It is about making small, consistent improvements every day. As the great philosopher Aristotle once said, We are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. So, my friends, I urge you to start investing in your personal development today. Take the time to reflect on your strengths and weaknesses, set meaningful goals, and create a plan of action. Surround yourself with like-minded people who will support and motivate you on your journey. And most importantly, take action. Take that first step towards your goals, and then another, and another, until you reach your destination. Moving on to number five, and this is one a lot of us deal with. With that said, one of the main reasons why we procrastinate in hitting our goals is the lack of motivation. Yes, you heard me right. Lack of motivation is one of the biggest reasons why your procrastination is killing your goals. You may be wondering, how can something as simple as motivation have such a huge impact on our lives? Well, let me tell you, my friends, motivation is the driving force behind every successful person. It is the fuel that keeps us going when times get tough, and the fire that keeps us burning bright when we feel like giving up. But unfortunately, many of us struggle with this concept of motivation. We often find ourselves lacking the drive and determination to take action towards our goals. We make excuses, we procrastinate, and we let our dreams slip away. 
And the sad truth is, this lack of motivation is what ultimately leads to our failure. So why do we struggle with motivation? Is it because we are lazy or lack ambition? No, my friends. It is not that simple. You see, motivation is not something that we are born with. It is something that we must cultivate and nurture within ourselves. And the good news is, it is something that we can all learn and develop. The first step to understanding motivation is to understand its true meaning. Motivation is not just a feeling or a burst of energy that we get from time to time. It is a mindset, a way of thinking, and a way of life. It is the belief that we can achieve our goals and the determination to take action towards them. It is the ability to push through challenges and setbacks, and the resilience to keep going when things get tough. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. How do we develop this mindset of motivation? Well, my friends, it all starts with our thoughts. Our thoughts have the power to shape our reality. If we constantly tell ourselves that we are not capable, or that our goals are too difficult to achieve, then we will never find the motivation to take action towards them. But if we change our thoughts and start believing in ourselves and our abilities, then we will start to see a shift in our motivation levels. Another important factor in developing motivation is having a clear vision of what we want to achieve. Without a clear vision, we are like a ship without a rudder, drifting aimlessly in the sea. We must have a destination in mind, a goal that excites us and gives us a sense of purpose. This vision will serve as our North Star, guiding us towards our goals and keeping us motivated along the way. But having a vision is not enough, my friends. We must also have a plan of action. We must break down our goals into smaller achievable steps and create a roadmap to reach them. This will not only give us a sense of direction, but also a sense of accomplishment as we tick off each step along the way. And let me tell you, my friends, there will be obstacles and challenges on this journey towards our goals. But it is during these times that our motivation is truly tested. It is easy to be motivated when everything is going well, but it takes true determination and resilience to keep going when things get tough. And this is where our mindset of motivation comes into play. We must remind ourselves of our vision, our why, and keep pushing forward despite the challenges. Now I am not saying that developing motivation is easy. It takes time, effort, and a lot of self-discipline. But the rewards are well worth it. When we are motivated, we are able to achieve things that we never thought possible. We are able to push past our limits and reach new heights. And most importantly, we are able to turn our dreams into reality. So my friends, I urge you to reflect on your own lives and see where you may be lacking motivation. Is it in your career, your relationships, or your personal development? Identify the areas where you want to see growth and start working on developing your mindset of motivation. Remember, it all starts with your thoughts, your vision, and your plan of action. Off to number four. We all have dreams, goals, and aspirations. We want to achieve success, happiness, and fulfillment in our lives. But why is it that some of us are able to make our dreams a reality, while others struggle and never seem to reach their full potential? The answer lies in our performance. You see, poor performance is not just about not meeting expectations or underperforming. It goes much deeper than that. Poor performance is a reflection of our mindset, our habits, and our actions. It is a result of our procrastination, our lack of discipline, and our fear of failure. Let me ask you this. How many times have you set a goal for yourself, only to push it aside and say, I'll do it later? How many times have you made excuses for not taking action towards your goals? How many times have you let fear hold you back from reaching your full potential? If you're not in your head, then you are not alone. We have all been guilty of procrastination and poor performance at some point in our lives. But the truth is, if we continue down this path, we will never achieve the success and happiness we desire. Procrastination is the enemy of progress. It is a thief of time and a killer of dreams. When we procrastinate, we are essentially saying that our goals and dreams are not important enough to take action on. We are giving in to our short-term desires and sacrificing our long-term success. But why do we procrastinate? One of the main reasons is fear. We are afraid of failure, of not being good enough, of what others might think of us. But let me tell you something. Failure is not the enemy. It is a necessary part of the journey toward success. It is through our failures that we learn, grow, and become better versions of ourselves. Another reason for poor performance is a lack of discipline. 
We live in a world where instant gratification is the norm. We want everything now and we want it with minimal effort. But the truth is, success requires discipline. It requires us to put in the work day in and day out, even when we don't feel like it. As the saying goes, the road to success is paved with hard work. So, how do we overcome procrastination and poor performance? The first step is to change our mindset. We need to shift our focus from short-term gratification to long-term success. We need to understand that success is not an overnight process, but a journey that requires patience, persistence, and hard work. The second step is to develop good habits. Our habits define who we are and ultimately determine our level of success. We need to develop habits that support our goals and eliminate those that hinder us. As Aristotle said, we are what we repeatedly do. Excellence, then, is not an act, but a habit. The third step is to take action. We can have all the right mindset and habits, but if we don't take action, nothing will change. We need to break down our goals into smaller manageable tasks and take consistent action towards them. Small steps taken every day can lead to significant results over time. And finally, we need to embrace failure. We need to understand that failure is not the end, but a stepping stone toward success. We need to learn from our mistakes and use them as fuel to keep going. Ladies and gentlemen, poor performance is not something to be taken lightly. It is a silent killer of our dreams and goals. But the good news is, we have the power to change it. We have the power to develop a mindset of success, to cultivate good habits, to take action, and to embrace failure. Now to number three. Number three is an important one because this one affects our health. See, procrastination is a silent killer of our goals. It creeps up on us disguised as a harmless delay or a moment of relaxation. But make no mistake, my friends, procrastination is a thief. It steals our time, our energy, and our dreams. And one of the main reasons why we procrastinate is because of increased stress and anxiety. In today's fast-paced world, stress and anxiety have become a part of our daily lives. We are constantly bombarded with deadlines, responsibilities, and expectations from others. We are expected to do more, be more, and achieve more. And in the midst of all this chaos, it is no wonder that we feel overwhelmed and anxious. But here's the thing, my friends. Stress and anxiety are not the problem. It is how we deal with them that makes all the difference. You see, when we are stressed and anxious, our natural response is to avoid the source of our stress. We distract ourselves with other tasks, we procrastinate, and we tell ourselves that we will deal with it later. But the truth is, later never comes. And the longer we put off facing our stress and anxiety, the more it builds up and the harder it becomes to tackle. So, how do we break this vicious cycle? How do we stop procrastinating and start taking action towards our goals? The answer, my friends, lies in personal development. Personal development is the key to unlocking our true potential and overcoming our fears and doubts. It is the process of continuously improving ourselves, both mentally and emotionally, to become the best version of ourselves. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. But Jim, I don't have time for personal development. I have too many things on my plate already. My friends, let me tell you this. Personal development is not a luxury. It is a necessity. Just like we need to exercise our bodies to stay physically fit, we also need to exercise our minds to stay mentally fit. And the best part is, personal development doesn't have to take up a lot of your time. It can be as simple as setting aside 15 minutes a day to read a book, listen to a podcast, or meditate. But why is personal development so important in overcoming procrastination? Well, for one, it helps us to manage our stress and anxiety more effectively. When we take the time to work on ourselves, we become more self-aware and better equipped to handle the challenges that come our way. We learn techniques to calm our minds, to prioritize our tasks, and to stay focused on our goals. Personal development also helps us to build resilience. It teaches us to embrace failure as a learning opportunity and to bounce back stronger after setbacks. And this is crucial because, let's face it my friends, the road to success is not a smooth one. There will be obstacles, there will be failures. But it is how we respond to them that makes all the difference. Moreover, personal development helps us to cultivate a growth mindset. A growth mindset is the belief that our abilities and intelligence can be developed through dedication and hard work. This is in contrast to a fixed mindset, 
which believes that our abilities and intelligence are set in stone. When we have a growth mindset, we are more likely to take on challenges and push through our fears and doubts. We understand that success is not a destination, but a journey of continuous improvement. So my friends, if you want to overcome procrastination and reach your goals, you must make personal development a priority in your life. Set aside time each day to work on yourself, to learn new skills, and to challenge your limiting beliefs. Surround yourself with people who inspire you and support your growth. And most importantly, never stop learning and growing. Coming up on number two, I want to talk to you about a topic that I believe is crucial for our personal growth and hitting our goals. Missed opportunities and how they are killing our goals through procrastination. We all have dreams and goals that we want to achieve in life, whether it is starting a successful business, traveling the world, or simply being happy and fulfilled. We all have something that we aspire to. But why is it that some of us are able to turn these dreams into reality, while others struggle to even get started? The answer, my friends, lies in the missed opportunities that we let slip away. You see, opportunities are like seeds. They have the potential to grow into something amazing, but they require action and nurturing to reach their full potential. And just like seeds, if we don't take action and seize these opportunities, they will wither away and die. And with them, our dreams and goals will also die. So why do we miss out on these opportunities? The answer is simple. Procrastination. We all have a tendency to put things off until tomorrow, thinking that we have all the time in the world. But the truth is, tomorrow is not guaranteed. And every time we procrastinate, we are letting go of an opportunity that could have brought us one step closer to our goals. Procrastination is a dream killer. It robs us of our time, our energy, and our potential. It lulls us into a false sense of security, making us believe that we have all the time in the world to chase our dreams. But the reality is, time is our most precious resource, and once it's gone, it's gone forever. So why do we continue to waste it by procrastinating? One of the main reasons for procrastination is fear. We fear failure, we fear rejection, we fear the unknown. And so we choose to stay in our comfort zone, where everything is familiar and safe. But let me tell you, my friends, nothing great ever comes from staying in our comfort zone. If we want to achieve our goals and live our dreams, we must be willing to step out of our comfort zone and take risks. Another reason for procrastination is a lack of clarity. We often have big dreams and goals, but we have no idea how to achieve them. And so we put them off, thinking that we will figure it out eventually. But the truth is, if we don't have a clear plan and a roadmap to our goals, we will continue to procrastinate and miss out on opportunities that could have brought us closer to our dreams. But here's the thing, my friends. It's never too late to start. It's never too late to turn things around and start chasing your dreams. You see, missed opportunities are not failures. They are simply lessons. They teach us that we need to be more aware, more proactive, and more decisive. And most importantly, they teach us that we need to take action now. Not tomorrow, not next week, but now. So how do we overcome procrastination and start seizing the opportunities that come our way? The first step is to have a clear vision of what you want to achieve. Take some time to sit down and write down your goals. Be specific, be detailed, and be honest with yourself. This will give you a clear direction and a sense of purpose. The second step is to create a plan of action. Break down your goals into smaller achievable tasks and set a timeline for each one. This will not only help you stay organized, but it will also give you a sense of accomplishment every time you tick off a task from your list. The third step is to take action. This is where most people get stuck. They have a vision, they have a plan, but they fail to take action. Don't let that be you. Start taking small steps towards your goals every day. Remember, even the smallest step forward is still progress. And finally, Surround yourself with like-minded individuals who will support and encourage you on your journey. Find a mentor, join a mastermind group, or simply surround yourself with positive and driven individuals. Their energy and motivation will rub off on you, and you will be more likely to stay focused and committed to your goals. Now, to number one. And this one is the most important. As many of you know, I have spent my life studying and teaching the principles of success. And I can tell you with absolute certainty that time management is a crucial element in achieving your goals and dreams. We live in a fast-paced world where time seems to slip through our fingers like sand. 
we are bombarded with endless distractions, from social media to the latest news. And in this chaos, it is easy to fall into the trap of procrastination. Procrastination is the thief of time. It is the enemy of progress and the killer of dreams. And unfortunately, it is a habit that many of us struggle with. We tell ourselves that we will start working on our goals tomorrow, or next week, or next month. But the truth is, tomorrow never comes. And before we know it, we are left with a pile of unfinished tasks and unfulfilled dreams. But why do we procrastinate? Some may say it is because we are lazy or lack motivation. I believe the root cause of procrastination is a lack of time management. We often underestimate the power of time and fail to realize that it is our most valuable resource. We cannot control time, but we can control how we use it. Think about it. Successful people have the same 24 hours in a day as you and me. The difference is how they manage their time. They understand that time is a precious commodity, and they use it wisely. They have a clear understanding of their priorities and make sure to allocate their time accordingly. So, how can we improve our time management skills and overcome procrastination? The first step is to understand the importance of setting goals. Without clear goals, we are like ships without a destination, drifting aimlessly in the sea of life. Goals give us direction and purpose, helping us prioritize our time. But setting goals is not enough. We must also have a plan in place to achieve those goals. This is where time management comes into play. We must learn to manage our time effectively to make progress towards our goals. This means eliminating distractions and focusing on the tasks at hand. One of the most effective ways to manage our time is through the use of a schedule. I know some of you may cringe at the thought of a rigid schedule, but trust me, it is a game changer. A schedule helps us stay organized, ensures that we make time for our priorities, and helps us avoid the trap of procrastination. But having a schedule is not enough. We must also learn to stick to it. This requires discipline and commitment. We must hold ourselves accountable and make a conscious effort to follow our schedule. It may not be easy at first, but with practice, it will become a habit. Another crucial aspect of time management is learning to say no. We live in a society that glorifies busyness and makes us feel guilty for not saying yes to every request that comes our way. But the truth is, we cannot do it all. We must learn to prioritize and say no to tasks and activities that do not align with our goals. Remember, every time we say yes to something, we are saying no to something else. So choose wisely. Now, I am not saying that we should become workaholics and neglect our personal lives. On the contrary, time management also involves making time for self-care and relaxation. We must learn to strike a balance between work and play. Taking breaks and recharging our batteries is essential for our productivity and overall well-being. In addition to managing our time, we must also learn to manage our mindset. Our thoughts and beliefs have a significant impact on our actions and habits. If we constantly tell ourselves that we are too busy, or that we don't have enough time, we will continue to procrastinate. We must shift our mindset and start thinking of time as a valuable resource that we must use wisely. Finally, I want to leave you with one last thought. Time is a non-renewable resource. Once it is gone, we can never get it back. So I urge you to make the most of every moment. Don't let procrastination and poor time management hold you back from achieving your goals and living your best life. Remember, time management is a crucial aspect of personal growth. It is not just about achieving our goals, but also about becoming the best version of ourselves. So let us commit to managing our time effectively, and I guarantee that we will see a significant improvement in our lives. Before we leave here today, I would like to share three golden quotes that I carry with me daily. These quotes have the power to change your life. 1. Success is not the absence of failure, it's the persistence through failure. Every great achievement, every breakthrough, every success story is littered with failures. Failure is not a reflection of our abilities. It is a reflection of our efforts. It is a sign that we are trying, pushing ourselves out of our comfort zones, and taking risks. Embrace failure, learn from it, and let it fuel your determination to keep going. 2. Success is not about being the best, it's about always getting better. Success is not a destination, it is a journey of continuous growth and improvement. Instead of striving to be the best, focus on always getting better. Personal development is the key to unlocking your full potential. Commit to learning and growing every day. 
3. Success is not the absence of problems, it's the ability to deal with them. Problems are a necessary part of the journey toward success. Instead of seeing them as roadblocks, see them as opportunities for growth. Change your perspective, take action, and cultivate a positive mindset. Believe in yourself, and you will overcome any obstacle that comes your way. Your belief in yourself is not just about you, it is about the impact you can make in the world. When you believe in yourself and your abilities, you inspire others to do the same. So believe in yourself, take this message to heart, and start cultivating a strong belief in yourself. Remember, you are capable, you are worthy, and you are enough. Believe in yourself, and the world will believe in you too. Thank you. Today I am excited to share with you five powerful ways to transform your mindset. As we all know, our mindset plays a crucial role in shaping our lives. It determines our beliefs, attitudes and actions, which ultimately lead us towards success or failure. In today's message I want to address the common struggles that many of us face when it comes to our mindset. You are not alone in this journey. We all have our own battles to fight. But the good news is that we have the power to turn things around. By listening to this message, you will gain valuable insights and practical tools that will help you shift your mindset and create a more fulfilling life. So get ready to take notes and be prepared to make some positive changes. Let's dive in, starting with number 5. The fifth way to transform your mindset is practicing self-care. Now some of you may be wondering, what exactly is self-care? Is it taking a bubble bath or indulging in your favorite dessert? While those things can certainly be a part of self-care, it goes much deeper than that. Self-care is about taking care of yourself physically, mentally, and emotionally. It is about recognizing your needs and making sure they are met. It is about showing yourself love and compassion, just as you would for a loved one. But why is self-care so important? Well, let me ask you this. Have you ever been on an airplane? If so, you may remember the safety instructions before takeoff. In case of an emergency, we are told to put on our own oxygen mask before helping others. Why is that? Because we cannot help anyone else if we are not taking care of ourselves first. The same principle applies in life. We cannot be our best selves. We cannot reach our full potential if we are not taking care of ourselves. And yet, though many of us neglect self-care in the pursuit of success and happiness. But let me tell you, my friends, success and happiness cannot be achieved without self-care. It is the foundation upon which everything else is built. So let me share with you some ways in which you can practice self-care and transform your mindset. First and foremost, take care of your physical health. This may seem obvious, but it is often overlooked. Eat well, exercise regularly, and get enough rest. Our bodies are our vessels in this life, and we must treat them with respect and care. When we neglect our physical health, it can lead to fatigue, illness, and a negative mindset. So make it a priority to take care of your body. Next, take care of your mental health. Our minds are powerful, and they can either be our greatest ally or our worst enemy. So make sure to take time for yourself to recharge and relax. This could be through meditation, journaling, or simply taking a walk in nature. Find what works for you and make it a part of your routine. Another aspect of self-care is setting boundaries. This can be a difficult one for many of us, especially if we are people pleasers. But it is essential to set boundaries in our relationships, work, and personal life. This means saying no when we need to and not feeling guilty about it. It means recognizing when someone or something is draining our energy and taking steps to protect ourselves. Remember, you have the right to set boundaries and prioritize your well-being. Now let's talk about self-love. This is a term that is often misunderstood. Self-love is not about being selfish or arrogant. It is about accepting and loving yourself for who you are, flaws and all. It is about treating yourself with kindness and compassion, and not being too hard on yourself. We all make mistakes, we all have imperfections, but that is what makes us human. Embrace your uniqueness and practice self-love every day. Another way to practice self-care is through self-reflection. Take time to reflect on your thoughts, actions and emotions. This can help you gain a better understanding of yourself and identify areas for improvement. It can also help you celebrate your successes and acknowledge your strengths. Remember, self-reflection is not about judgment, but about growth and self-awareness. Lastly, surround yourself with positivity. This includes the people you spend time with. 
the content you consume, and the environment you are in. Negativity can be toxic and drain our energy. So make a conscious effort to surround yourself with positive and uplifting people. Read books or listen to podcasts that inspire you, and create a space that brings you joy and peace. My friends, self-care is not a luxury. It is a necessity. It is not selfish. It is essential. When we take care of ourselves, we are better equipped to take care of others and to achieve our goals. So make self-care a priority in your life and watch how it transforms your mindset. Now, on to number four. I want to talk to you about a topic that often brings fear and discomfort to many, but is the key to unlocking our greatest potential. Embracing failure. Yes, you heard me right. Embrace failure. The very word itself may make some of you cringe, but I want to challenge you to embrace it. Embrace failure as a necessary and valuable part of your journey towards success. As I always say, success is not to be pursued. It is to be attracted by the person you become. So let me ask you this. Who do you want to become? Do you want to be someone who is afraid of failure, who avoids taking risks and playing it safe? Or do you want to be someone who embraces failure as a stepping stone towards greatness? The choice is yours. I know that failure can be a difficult pill to swallow. It can be painful, embarrassing, and even discouraging. But let me tell you this. Failure is not the end. It is simply a detour on the road to success. In fact, failure is not something to be feared but rather something to be celebrated. Think about it. Every successful person you admire has experienced failure at some point in their journey. Walt Disney was fired from a newspaper for lacking creativity and imagination. Oprah Winfrey was told she was unfit for TV. Michael Jordan was cut from his high school basketball team. But did they let those failures define them? No, they used them as fuel to propel them towards their dreams. You see, failure is not a reflection of who you are but rather an opportunity for growth and learning. It is through failure that we discover our true strengths and weaknesses. And it is through failure that we learn to persevere and become resilient. I often say, don't wish it were easier, wish you were better. And that is exactly what failure allows us to do, to become better versions of ourselves. So instead of avoiding failure, embrace it. Embrace it as a necessary part of your journey towards success. Now I know some of you may be thinking, but Jim, how do I embrace failure? How do I turn something that feels so negative into a positive? Well, my friends, I have four ways to help you transform your mindset and embrace failure. Firstly, change your perspective. Instead of viewing failure as a setback, view it as a learning opportunity. Ask yourself, what can I learn from this experience? What did I do well? What can I improve on? When we shift our perspective, we open ourselves up to new possibilities and growth. Secondly, don't take failure personally. It is easy to let failure affect our self-esteem and confidence. But remember that failure is not a reflection of who you are as a person. Separate yourself from the failure and focus on the lessons and opportunities it presents. Thirdly, take responsibility for your failures. It can be tempting to blame others or external circumstances for our failures. But the truth is, we are in control of our own actions and decisions. Take ownership of your failures and use them as a chance to reflect and improve. Lastly, don't be afraid to fail again. As the saying goes, if at first you don't succeed, try, try again. Failure is not a one-time event. It is a continuous process. Embrace the possibility of failure and keep moving forward towards your goals. Now, I want to share with you a personal story about my own experience with failure. In my early 20s, I was struggling financially and emotionally. I had a job that I hated, and I was barely making ends meet. But instead of giving up, I decided to take a risk and start my own business. At first things were going well. I was making more money than I ever had before, and I was feeling confident. But as with any business, there were ups and downs, and unfortunately, I hit a major down. I lost everything. My business, my money, and my confidence. In that moment, I felt like a complete failure. I was embarrassed and ashamed. But I didn't let that failure define me. I picked myself up, dusted myself off, and started over. And let me tell you, that failure was the best thing that ever happened to me. It taught me valuable lessons about perseverance, resilience, and the power of a positive mindset. Now, on to number three, which is surrounding yourself with positive people. We have all heard the saying, 
you are the average of the five people you spend the most time with. And I am here to tell you that this statement is absolutely true. The people we surround ourselves with have a profound impact on our thoughts, actions, and ultimately, our success in life. Therefore, it is crucial that we carefully choose who we allow into our inner circle. Now you may be thinking, but Jim, I can't control who I work with or who my family members are. And while that may be true, you have the power to choose who you spend your free time with, who you confide in, and who you allow to influence your thoughts and beliefs. And this is where the transformation begins. You see, when we surround ourselves with positive people, we are exposed to their energy, their mindset, and their habits. And as human beings, we are highly influenced by our environment. When we are in the presence of positive, driven, and successful individuals, we are inspired to become the best versions of ourselves. We begin to adopt their positive mindset, their drive for success, and their habits that lead to greatness. On the other hand, if we surround ourselves with negative, toxic, and unmotivated individuals, we will inevitably start to adopt their negative mindset, their lack of drive, and their destructive habits. We become a product of our environment, whether we realize it or not. So the question becomes, how do we surround ourselves with positive people? Well, the first step is to be aware of the people we currently have in our lives. Are they positive, supportive, and uplifting? Or are they negative, critical, and draining? It's important to take a step back and evaluate the people we spend the most time with and be honest with ourselves about the impact they have on us. Next, we must actively seek out positive people. This could be through networking events joining a club or organization, or even reaching out to someone who inspires you. Don't be afraid to put yourself out there and connect with like-minded individuals. Remember, you are the average of the people you surround yourself with, so choose wisely. But it's not just about surrounding ourselves with positive people. It's also about being a positive influence on others. As the saying goes, you attract what you are, not what you want. If we want to be surrounded by positive people, we must first embody positivity ourselves. This means being kind, supportive, and uplifting to those around us. It means being a source of inspiration and motivation for others. And when we do this, we will naturally attract positive people into our lives. Now I want to address a common misconception about surrounding ourselves with positive people. Some may argue that being around positive people all the time is unrealistic and that we need to be exposed to negativity in order to grow and learn. And while I agree that we can learn from negative experiences, it's important to understand that there is a difference between being exposed to negativity and surrounding ourselves with negative people. Being exposed to negativity can teach us valuable lessons and help us grow. But surrounding ourselves with negative people can be detrimental to our growth and success. Negative people can drain our energy, discourage our dreams, and hold us back from reaching our full potential. So, it's important to find a balance and limit our exposure to negative people as much as possible. Now I want to share a personal story with you about the power of surrounding yourself with positive people. When I first started my journey towards personal development, I surrounded myself with positive people who would support and encourage me on my journey. And let me tell you, the transformation that occurred in my life was incredible. I started to see opportunities where I once saw obstacles. I started to believe in myself and my abilities. And most importantly, I started to achieve my goals and live a life of abundance and success. Now let's move on to the number two way to transform your mindset, which is setting goals. Now I know what some of you may be thinking. Goals? I've heard this before. It's nothing new. But let me tell you my friends, setting goals is not just about writing down a list of things you want to achieve. It's about creating a roadmap to your success, a blueprint for your dreams. Goals are the fuel that drives us towards our desired destination. Without them, we are just wandering aimlessly, hoping for things to fall into place. You see, life is a journey, and just like any journey, we need a map to guide us. We need to know where we are going and how we are going to get there. That's where goals come in. They give us direction, purpose, and motivation. They are the stepping stones that lead us to our ultimate destination. Success. But here's the thing. My friends, setting goals is not enough. We must also have the right mindset to achieve them. We must believe in ourselves, have the determination and discipline to follow through, and most importantly, we must have a burning desire to achieve our goals. As the great Napoleon Hill once said, 
A goal is a dream with a deadline. So let me ask you, what are your dreams? What are your goals? And most importantly, what is your deadline? Setting goals is not a one-time event. It is an ongoing process. It requires constant evaluation, adjustment, and action. So, how do we set goals that will truly transform our mindset and lead us to success? Let me share with you a simple yet powerful framework that has helped me and countless others achieve our goals. First and foremost, we must have a clear and specific goal. It's not enough to say, I want to be successful. What does success mean to you? Is it financial freedom, a fulfilling career, or a happy and healthy family? The more specific and detailed our goal is, the more real and tangible it becomes. Next, we must have a strong why. Our why is the driving force behind our goal. It's the reason we get up early, work hard, and stay committed, even when things get tough. Our why gives us purpose and meaning, and it's what keeps us going when we face challenges and setbacks. But setting goals is not just about the end result. It's also about the journey. That's why we must have a plan. A plan is a roadmap that outlines the steps we need to take to achieve our goals. It helps us stay organized, focused, and on track. As the saying goes, failing to plan is planning to fail. Now having a plan is great, but it's useless without action. We must take massive action towards our goals. It's not enough to just think or talk about our goals, we must act on them. As the saying goes, actions speak louder than words. So let your actions be a reflection of your goals and desires. However, we must also remember that setbacks and challenges are a part of the journey. We will face obstacles, but it's how we respond to them that will determine our success. We must have the resilience and perseverance to overcome any challenges that come our way. As the great Thomas Edison once said, I have not failed. I've just found 10,000 ways that won't work. And finally, we must have accountability. Accountability is the glue that holds our goals together. It's what keeps us on track and ensures we stay committed to our goals. We must have someone who will hold us accountable, whether it's a coach, mentor, or an accountability partner. As the saying goes, if you want to go fast, go alone. If you want to go far, go together. My friends, setting goals is not just about achieving our dreams. It's about becoming the best version of ourselves. It's about pushing ourselves out of our comfort zones and growing into the person we are meant to be. It's about transforming our mindset and unlocking our full potential. And finally, number one, practicing gratitude. Gratitude is not just a feeling or a passing thought. It's a way of life. It's a mindset that allows us to see the good in every situation, no matter how challenging it may be. It's the practice of acknowledging and appreciating the blessings in our lives, both big and small. And let me tell you, my friends, when you make gratitude a part of your daily routine, it has the power to completely transform your life. We live in a world where it's so easy to focus on what we don't have, what we haven't achieved, and what is going wrong in our lives. We are bombarded with messages of lack and scarcity, making it easy for us to fall into a negative mindset. But I'm here to tell you that practicing gratitude is the key to breaking free from this cycle of negativity. When we practice gratitude, we are training our minds to see the positive, to see the abundance that surrounds us. It's like putting on a pair of glasses that allows us to see the world in a whole new light. Suddenly, we are no longer focused on what we lack, but instead, we are filled with appreciation for all that we have. But gratitude is not just about being thankful for the good things in our lives. It's also about being grateful for the challenges and hardships that we face. Because it's through these challenges that we grow, we learn, and we become stronger. As the saying goes, smooth seas do not make skillful sailors. I can personally attest to the power of gratitude in transforming one's mindset. Growing up I was a farm boy with big dreams. I wanted to achieve greatness and make a difference in the world. But I faced many challenges and setbacks along the way. However through it all, I held on to my practice of gratitude. I was grateful for the lessons I learned, the people who supported me, and the opportunities that came my way. And let me tell you my friends, Gratitude has brought me more success and fulfillment than I could have ever imagined. It has allowed me to see the good in every situation, to learn from my mistakes, and to appreciate the people who have helped me along the way. It has also given me the strength to keep pushing forward, even in the face of adversity. Now you may be wondering, how exactly do we practice gratitude? And the answer is simple. It starts with a shift in our mindset. 
instead of focusing on what we don't have, we must shift our focus to what we do have. We must train our minds to see the blessings in our lives, no matter how small they may seem. One way to do this is through a gratitude journal. Every day, take a few minutes to write down three things you are grateful for. They can be as simple as having a roof over your head, food on your table, or a loving family. As you continue this practice, you will begin to see that there is so much to be grateful for in your life. Another way to practice gratitude is through acts of kindness. When we do something kind for someone else, it not only makes them feel good, but it also fills our hearts with gratitude. It can be as simple as paying for someone's coffee, helping a friend in need, or volunteering in your community. These small acts of kindness not only make a difference in someone else's life, but they also remind us of all the good in the world. And finally, one of the most powerful ways to practice gratitude is through the power of our words. When we express our gratitude to others, we not only make them feel appreciated, but we also reinforce the positive in our own minds. So make it a habit to thank the people in your life for their support, their love, and their contributions. And most importantly, don't forget to thank yourself for all that you have accomplished and overcome. My friends, I cannot stress enough the importance of practicing gratitude. It is the key to transforming your mindset and living a life of abundance and fulfillment. And as we continue on our journey of personal development, I urge you to make gratitude a part of your daily routine. I promise you, it will change your life in ways you never thought possible. Thank you. Always do more than you get paid for to make an investment in your future. Now some unions would argue with us on this. That's my papa's seminar in a sentence. Always do more than you get paid for to make an investment in your future. My father was so unique. Papa said if it's raining, you can't fix the roof. If it isn't raining, it doesn't need to be fixed. So, review your performance, your language with your children. Just go over that and say, have I been too harsh, too strong, too stubborn? Did I learn to be easier, mix more compassion with the tough stuff I have to deal with? Yes, you know, prayer will help. Sometimes nothing else. You know, dear God, Help me say the right thing not to ruin it all by poor communication. Here's the next one on my list. Face your fears. You know, I don't know what challenges you might have in going over the stuff we've been going over in terms of amending your philosophy or going back and redoing some stuff that you might have messed up. Face all your fears. That's how you conquer them. Don't dismiss them. Value them. Face them. So, here's what I'm afraid of. I wonder what I could do to change that. Here's the next one. Exercise your willpower to change direction. You don't have to keep doing what you've done for the last six years if it's not yielding you the benefits you want. In the seminar I do for Jerry, my mentor helped me to review the last six years so I wouldn't repeat those errors in the next six. See, if you're a goose, you have no choice but to do the next six like you did the last six. But if you're not a goose, here's what you can do. Pick a new destination and start going that way. You see, if I've done this for the last two years, I'll probably have to do it another two. The answer is no, not in a million years. Now you can change one little degree at a time, or if you want to, you can revolutionize the whole thing. Who says you couldn't revolutionize the whole thing in a week's time and start a brand new direction that will most assuredly help you arrive in a brand new place a year from now, three years, or five years from now? Or you could arrive. Use your willpower to start the process. Just willpower to change a little or change a lot. Anybody can change. You don't have to repeat last year. Clean up the errors. Invest now in the next year. Watch it make the difference. Here's the next one that's important. If parents have to do it, we ask our kids to do it. But we've got to do it. Admit your mistakes. Sometimes you have to admit them to others. Here's some of the best words in the English language. I'm sorry. The reason why those are good words is because it could start a whole new relationship. It could start two people going in a whole new direction. I'm sorry. Simple, easy, not easy, but if you get this done, the turnaround can be dramatic. The early years can pay off big. And here's the big one. Admit your mistakes to yourself. You don't have to babble about them to everybody in the neighborhood. But it doesn't hurt to sit down and have a conversation with yourself and say, there's no use kidding myself. Here's where I really am. I've got pennies in my pocket and I've got nothing in the bank. That's what I said after the Girl Scout left my door. I had a conversation with myself and I said, I don't want this to happen anymore. Next, refine your goals. 
I don't know what ambitions you've had up until now, but this weekend would be a good time to start the process. We're going to talk about our goals workshop before our session is over this weekend. Maybe that will help stimulate you to set some higher goals, reach for some higher purpose, go for something beyond what you thought you could do. But by the time this weekend's over, you might double, triple, quadruple the amount of goals, purpose, all the things you think you can accomplish. You could multiply that by 10 by the time we finish here on Sunday. Here's the next one. Believe in yourself. Yes, you've got to believe in God, and you've got to believe in the community, and you've got to believe in the possibilities. You've got to believe the economy. You've got to believe that tomorrow can be better than today. But here's the big one. Believe in yourself. There isn't a skill you can't learn. There isn't a discipline you can't try. There isn't a class you couldn't take. There isn't a book you couldn't read if it's written in some of the language. You just get it translated and read it. Here's the next one. Ask for wisdom. This is communication of the highest source. Ask for wisdom that creates answers. Ask for the wisdom that creates faith to believe things are possible. In King Solomon's day, there was the dilemma of two mothers who claimed the same baby. And the question was, whose baby is this? This mother says it's mine. The other mother says no, it's mine. Solomon said, bring me the baby. They brought in the baby and he raised the sword. He said, I'm going to cut this baby in half and give half to this mother. And as he raised his sword sobbingly, the real mother said, No, 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 don't cut the baby in half, give it to her, who was not the real mother. Solomon says, Now I know who's the real. D, that is so wise. And the moment was such drama, that Solomon, the wisest of the wise, knew what to do to settle the deal. Ask for wisdom to deal with the challenges of today and tomorrow, to deal with the challenges your family brings you. Don't wish it was easier. Wish you were better. Here's the next one. Conserve your time. I must learn to do this. How much time have I got left? Not an unlimited supply. How many of these weekends can I do? Not a thousand, just a few. Maybe a handful. Sometimes we get faked out. Bill Bailey says. The average person says I've got 20 more years. No, Bill says. You've got 20 more times. If you go fishing once a year, you've only got 20 more times to go fishing. Not 20 years. That fakes you out. I've got 20 years. No, 20 times. See, that brings it right down to the real stuff. 20 times. How many more seminars like this? Not a thousand, a few, just a few. So, would I mumble and stumble? Would I give you less than my best when I've only got a few more to give? And the answer is no, of course not. If you're a person of some dignity and quality, you wouldn't let that happen. Next, invest your profits. We're going to talk now about this before the weekend is over on financial independence, and I'm going to give you some excellent advice here. Here's one of the philosophies Mr. Shug gave me along with Mary Kay. Here's what he said. Profits are better than wages. Wages make you a living. Profits make you a fortune. Mary Kay and I went for that. Wow, could we start earning profits while we're making a living? The answer is yes, I went berserk. Here's one now, protect your family. These are troublesome times. Not that they haven't been troublesome times for 6,000 years at school. Troublesome times. I know a wonderful mother and a wonderful father who had two boys in school. They went two different directions. And one became a model citizen. And the other one went to jail. Wow, protect your family as best you can from the hidden dangers. The lurking evil one. Here's the next one. Live with intensity. You might as well turn it up a notch or two after this weekend. Why not invest more of you in whatever you do? Be a little stronger. Be a little wiser. Step up your vitality contribution. Put everything you've got into everything you do. And then ask for more vitality. And more strength. And more vigor. More heart. More soul. Next. Find your place. This one now is so important. If you just work on a job. Find the best place where you can serve well, and sure enough, they'll ask you to occupy a better place. And if you keep doing the job well, the guy says, Well, if I had a better job, I'd really pour it on. But I got this lousy job, so I just goof off. See, that's the philosophy of disaster. So if you've got a lousy job, do the very best you can. That's your best way out, is not to do less than you could, 
but to do the best you can. With that philosophy, your life can take great leaps forward. Here's a Bible phrase that says if you work on your gifts, they will make room for you. They'll make a place for you. Here's the next one. Demand integrity from yourself. You can't demand integrity from someone else. Integrity is like loyalty. You can't demand it of someone else. You can only demand it of yourself. Be the best example of loyalty, and you'll get some loyal followers. Be the best example of integrity, and you'll have people surround you that have integrity. Lead the way. Next, the disciplines. Can't give you much better advice than that because disciplines create the reality. Disciplines build bridges, build cities. A well-disciplined activity creates abundance, creates uniqueness, productivity. Next, fight for what's right. It's a fight. We're in the story. The storyteller says, And there was a great war in heaven. You mean way back there again. One third of the angels conspired. I asked Bill Bailey, How long were you supposed to put a third of these angels to get together? Did they conduct the meetings? I don't know, Bailey said. The storyteller doesn't exist. I said, Then we're supposed to use our imagination. I don't know. It does say, Finally, the great war occurred, and the two-thirds prevailed, and the one-third lost. One of the writers of later scripture, here's what he said, I fought a good fight. See, that's extraordinary to be able to say, I fought for my kids, and I fought for what was right, and I fought for my good health, and I fought to protect my company, and I fought for a good career that would bless my family. I fought a good fight. It's good to fight the encroachment. Opposites are in conflict, and we're in the middle. And if you want something valuable, you've got to fight for it. Then, this writer also said, Not only have I fought a good fight, and I'll finish with this, and I've got a much longer list, but maybe I can cover these at another time. He said, I fought a good fight, and I kept the faith. See, that's keep faith with your fight. Like crazy, and keep faith. Fight the enemy, and keep faith. Fight the illness, and keep faith. Fight the evil, and keep faith. I can't give you much better advice. So, thank you very much for your attention. I appreciate it.